have a special finance at 720 right here. We're not going to move. We'll do our finance meeting here. And then at uh, our no normal course of business during the board meeting, there's a resolution <coughs> approving it on behalf of the board of supervisors. So uh, I guess I would, uh, can we do a, uh, I'll ask our state rep in the back. Welcome. Can we do a, like a all in favor, aye, or do we have to do a roll call? We need uh, 12, and we have 14 right now. Yeah. Oh, we do? Well, if they all do, yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. So I guess uh, <coughs> well, the question would be those aren't present. Is that an A or yay? So all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. We have one opposed, Jeff and there. So everybody else is yay? So I guess the motion passes. Thank you. So in a couple minutes, we're going to have the college do a presentation on their capital project. And then after that, we'll do our finance committee meeting. <coughs> Jim will just wait a little bit uh, until more people, if more people show up. <coughs> yeah. Anybody got any questions? Is there any action for a town to take now to adopt this? <laughs> Next step. Yes, that question came up a long time ago. Um, and, uh, you probably should have your town board adopt it. Okay, go for it. <coughs> so basically, I think what we decided is that these shared service agreements that relate to the town, like you know, would you do you want to contract with IT services or real property? Right. That would take an agreement with your town board. So the county's putting it in motion <laughs> to do so on our end, but it can only work if your town board votes in. So, and I guess if you don't have somebody else in contract, with you, right. 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 So how how we're doing this too is all those things that are for the town. The county will do one general resolution that will encompass all the towns, not each specific individually towns like we've done in the past. Mm -hmm. So when we pass a resolution for IT services or HR services, it's going to be uh, specific to all the towns. Okay, so you can come in on that. You just got to take it to your full board if you want to. I know we didn't get it into the plan, but I still want you to work on trying to uh, be able to audit our courts next year for us. That would be a help from the controller's office. Oh, yeah. It <laughs> <laughs> would save us all some money. You can do that. Yourself. We got a shady court. You have a Yeah. Ron, uh, real property assistance. We've been just contracting with that, but I think we did do a resolution. Yeah, we did. We did blanket. Right? And how about yeah. highway? Oh, uh, they're already in existence. Yeah, we did and that. Blanket go. Yeah, but the, the towns need to do a separate resolution. He did, probably. He probably already had it. Right? Yeah. yeah, we we did one through Public Works, and then all the towns kind of circulated right. it, yeah. and did it. So that if need be, you know, we have an agreement. That was before the shared service plan, really. But do we need to yeah, do this? We do this every year. There's also another one we could probably do too next year, that's Kronos, is what we're finding out yeah. that we can, uh, through uh, Kinderhook with Pat, uh, since the county has, has already implemented Kronos, um, they've come out and said that they can basically do search services using the county's platform, okay, and contract um, for your towns, which save you guys um, some bucks. I did want to thank the panel. We had three panel meetings, <coughs> as well as uh, we had three public hearings. Uh, and I'd like to thank Ron Caponera, who sort of pulled this together for us. So the whole thing is worth $1,880,000. Those are the numbers that we came up, came up with it. Potential savings to the taxpayers. Is that good enough for the state? Uh, is it your money too? You live in the county? Are those summarized in this nice handout? Yeah, they are. Great. Thank you. Okay. Yep.
Um, the, the roof literally leaks right now. Uh, we've been able to mitigate that as best we can, but again, it's at the end of its lifespan, and we really need to replace the roof. Uh, the other items that you see there, the uh, interior, exterior, uh, or exterior and interior doors and windows of south side of buildings, everybody's been on our campus, so you're familiar with the south side of campuses where that big parking lot is, where you come into the gymnasium and the, uh, and the student dining hall. Well, that whole south side, um, when we did our renovation in 1997, we didn't do anything with that. And now we've got the seals on the windows are broken. Uh, we're losing energy that way. Uh, it's just the, that, that end of the campus, which is really the main entrance to the, uh, to the building, is, uh, it is, in, is in very bad shape. Again, this is not cosmetic that we're talking about. These are things that need to be replaced because they're at the end of their useful lifespan. Uh, sorry, Mr. Chair. Uh, the bathroom renovations, again, in our 1997 complete renovation of the main building, we didn't complete all the restrooms, and the ADA requirements have changed significantly since then <coughs> anyway, and we need to upgrade to meet those new requirements. Right now, we're grandfathered in, but we need to, uh, we, we really need to be sensitive to the needs of our students and our guests, so there's uh, certain upgrades that have to be done there. Uh, the VT base remediate replace, that's in one of our buildings. Again, it's, uh, uh, it, it's in very bad shape and, and, and we need to uh, address that. The next two, the uh, security system and the fire system updates. There, uh, right now, the, the technology has changed so significantly since 1997 that we're having trouble getting components, uh, replacement components for a lot of these systems. The campus is perfectly safe uh, given the current systems that are in place but the technology has changed and anything that goes wrong now is more difficult to remediate. So that we've included that in this proposal. And again, a lot of these things are, uh, are, are going to need to be replaced one way or another. So we, we try to put them all into one major capital project so we wouldn't, frankly, so we wouldn't have to keep coming back to you uh, every year or so uh, with the same list and say, you know, now it's, at a crisis point. So um, this is really a take care of business today so we don't have to deal with it uh, tomorrow, as it were. Future programming, in our meeting with the, the leadership and, and, and several of you in this room, over a period of time, and identified in our, our uh, master plan update, uh, we realized that there's a, there's a great need for diversifying our curriculum offerings. Uh, we need to bring new programs online. And you've heard me say this for years and years. We've never had the money to invest in new programs. Uh, starting up a new program in any field becomes very expensive, and we've just never had the money to invest. We've always stuck with what we've had and what we do well, but we need to diversify. We're getting <coughs> from the community, from you, from employers, uh, and in order to do that, we have to make an investment. We can, again, leverage uh, capital money to do that. It, it won't pay for operations. We can't hire faculty members with this, but what we can do is outfit labs, and uh, we, can, we can make a substantial investment in uh, new programs. Uh, some of the new programs that we've been looking at, again, coming out of the master plan, uh, cybersecurity program. Uh, as some of you know that uh, we, we already have uh, we're, we're well down the road on a construction technology and historic preservation program. Uh, we're looking at some uh, programs in the health uh, services area uh, yet to be identified. Uh, we're, 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 we're kind of in a funny spot because before we go through the, the arduous process of getting our programs approved, we have to make sure that uh, we have the money to put behind it. Uh, the state, SUNY and the State Education Department will not um, approve programs that we, unless we can demonstrate that the labs are in place, or at least we have a plan to invest in labs uh, that are necessary to support the program. So uh, that investment has to be uh, has to be shown to the state. Um, when we look down here, repurposing the block building, that's that ugly brown building on the west side of the campus, which is basically our attic and, and our storage facility right now. As seasonal storage, we'd have to move that out and, and put that in, a, in, a, in another uh, uh, much more, uh, much smaller and more efficient facility. But that becomes 
Uh, that block building is really where the construction technology program would be housed. Uh, it's a great space for that. There's no water up there. There's no connection to our wastewater plant, so all those connections have to be made. The building has to be brought up to code. This would include money for equipment for that particular program. Um, and that program is well, uh, has worked its way through the process of approvals. Now we've got the program, we have to find a place to put it. Uh, repurposing, just very quickly again, the uh, repurposing and renovating, there's a couple of rooms mentioned there, 508 and 404 is not going to mean much. Um, those are just kind of designated spaces. One's an abandoned photo lab. When we used the, when photo labs were uh, necessary before all the digital age came in with cameras, uh, we have um, we have an old room that it's a very sizable room that was a photo lab uh, that can be repurposed for uh, some other curriculum. Uh, 404 is a, likewise a, a room that's not utilized but can be converted into a uh, very nice uh, lab perhaps related to health services. We've looked at uh, occupational therapy assistant, um, physical therapy assistant. We've looked at uh, some geriatric uh, care type uh, programs, and those all need facilities. So uh, that, that covers those. Um, the next item, the renovation construction to accommodate future programming needs. Frankly, this is for things we don't even know about yet. These are. Uh, areas we have to go back into the master plan update, take a look and see what curriculums might be viable on both sides uh, that lead to jobs. You know, we're putting in programs that lead to jobs, but also putting in programs that people are going to want. Um, we often forget that when we're having conversations about program development that we can put in the greatest and, and uh, high tech program in the world, but if we don't have students interested in taking it, then we've wasted your money. So we have to go through our due diligence, do all of our data studies, and then go through the approval process with SUNY and the State Education Department. So that's, uh, that funding there obviously is an estimate of what we might need in order to affect some, some, new, some other new programs. Um, that, that last item that drops below the, the, the future programming item, the student information uh, software, that's probably the least glamorous of anything that we have on here. Our, our college is one of only 50 left in the United States that's using software that we installed in 1985. It's, what is it, green, green screen. Green screen, it's not Windows based. Um, that runs all of our systems. It runs payroll, it runs uh, student records, registration, runs everything that we have. We. And in fact, it goes out of date and becomes obsolete in 2020. Um, so it, right now it's not compliant with anything as far as reporting goes. Every time we have to do a report, there's a lot of custom work that's involved. So the system is just outlived its usefulness. We've not been able to replace it, frankly, because we've not had the opportunity to leverage it as part of a capital investment. It's allowable under the, uh, the SUNY guidelines. <coughs> but we've never been able to put everything together as you're seeing it tonight and include that one, that particular item. It's a lot of money. It's not, it's one it's that we'd rather spend that on something else, but it, it, it will shut us down by 2020 because we won't be able to, we won't be able to process a student to get them registered. So literally uh, that, 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 uh, that software is, is a goner. We have to do something and we have to do it pretty quick. Uh, so those are the major elements. Again, the, the partnership is between Columbia and Greene County, State University of New York. Uh, the resolution that you have before you tonight for consideration is uh, to speak up to $5 million, uh, Columbia County share, keeping in mind that that $5 million will leverage $20 million um, in, in, in terms of what we can do, what we can achieve, and that's what, uh, that's what we have before you. The sequencing right now, uh, Green County, we, we've gone through several different processes with, with the two counties. Uh, Green County was about to approve it last month, this proposal, needed additional <coughs> information. So uh, we, we went back, we uh, explained a few items uh, to, to uh, the Green County legislators and uh, at their um, county resources committee, they, the Green County legislature has a little different 
of uh, the configuration and functioning than, than the Board of Supervisors does. Uh, last Wednesday night at the uh, County Resources Committee, which is our home committee in Green County, uh, the resolution was passed, it was approved, it goes to their Finance Committee on Monday night, and then to the Green County Legislature a week from tonight. So they're, they're a week behind you uh, in, in, in the sequence. And, and I have mistakenly said it had passed the Green County Legislature. When I heard it passed the resources, I mistook that. Yeah, so that's, I want to apologize. That was, that, that was the committee. So we're, uh, uh, we're, we're well on our way to uh, uh, approval in, uh, in, in Green County. So those are the major elements. Again, if you have to go into any detail or answer any questions that anyone you might have. And if I can't, uh, Diane and Jim are here. And just real quick on the infrastructure costs. I know you've uh, done your best to try and do cost estimates for this whole project. Um, if you go to bid on these particular projects and they come in under cost, um, are we looking at potential savings to the whole entire project or are there alternatives already in line to spend some of the funding on? Yeah, we have other priorities. The, uh, the, the NASCAR plan that we submitted to the Board of, uh, the board of Supervisors, uh, thank you for the question, because it, it uh, really, if you remember right, I mean, everybody fell out of their chair because that original proposal was for $86 million, right? Uh, and that included a lot of projects. So I would say if there are, these, these numbers are probably pretty close, uh, but if there are other, other things that can be funded, it's just going to be a more of an investment in the future. And again, so we don't have to keep coming back to you. So if we approve up to $5 million, we'll be borrowing $5 million. Well, yeah. Anything else I can answer? Don? Yeah, um, I would like to, uh, I, was, I first want to appreciate, uh, my express my appreciation to the chair for having included me on the subcommittee that <laughs> looked into this. Second, I want to say that I, um, I'm very supportive of this, of this project after having, having sat and talked with you about it. And, I, and for, on a couple of reasons. You may not know this, but in my professional life prior to this, I, I was in higher education administration, both in college and the university level. And there are, this is a very, very competitive marketplace that Columbia Green finds itself in for students. And students today are looking for two things. They're looking for programs and they're looking for facilities. And, and I think the wisdom of this project is that it combines both. We have a handsome facility in that campus and we don't want it to deteriorate because that will draw, that will draw students, as will the new programming, which I think has also been very creatively uh, developed. And I want to compliment you on that as well. This is a sort of build it, if, build it and they will come don't build it and they won't come. Um, and I think it's really important to pursue this, and we do have the partnership with <laughs> Green County that is, that's coming forward with, with their fair share as well. So anyway, thank you. I think it's a great plan. Great. Thank you. Uh, is this an all or nothing proposal? In other words, um, I know it's $20 million, five from us, five from Green, 10 from the state, right? So yes. if every part of this, this is, in other words, it's $20 million. Yes. Are there parts of this that are, not particularly necessary, or is it we're approving 100% of this proposal? Yeah, those are all the priority ones that came out of our master planning process. Uh, there, there are some priority twos in there, but they're really uh, programmatic, so we, we did add to that uh, uh, the cost from our master plan. And, and, and again, you talk about a repurposing of a room. Yeah. Um, more specific? Thing. Sure. Uh, I mean, there's $800,000 worth of repurposing. Yeah, uh, and, and that includes re equipment in addition to the renovation of the room. The photo lab that I mentioned before is, uh, as you can imagine, what a photo lab would look like uh, with the tables and the, you know, the enlargers and, and, and the whole thing. Uh, uh, once that equipment gets ripped out of there, and we can do something with the room in order to make it usable again with whatever electrical or HVAC or whatever we need to do in there. That could very easily become a free engineering lab. It could become a cybersecurity lab. So the, 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 the amounts that you see in there would really cover, say we made it into a cybersecurity lab. Well, that could cover 20 workstations, 20 computer uh, workstations with the latest software one would need in order to be trained on cybersecurity issues or forensic investigation, uh, you know, those type of programs. So once you start putting the equipment in, it isn't the room itself, maybe this isn't phrased very well, but it isn't just the renovation of the room and putting up sheetrock, this is the equipment that goes in. 
If we go to an occupational therapy assistant or physical therapy assistant type program, again, it's that equipment that we need, and that stuff's really, uh, you know, it's very expensive. Um, does that yeah. answer the question? If, uh, if I could, just, and I, then I'll go to Rick. Um, we put it, you remember, we put a committee together from Columbia County, Green County, uh, Don Moore, myself, uh, Art Basson, Bill Hughes, uh, Ron Caponera, PJ, are all on the committee from Columbia County. Then there were a contingent from Green County. One of the things, you know, we were looking at, you know, ideas for funding, but one of the things we also did as a, as a committee, and, and Jim was already on the staff in the college, was encourage them to look at new curriculum. Uh, so I, I think, you know, this is something that we as a joint committee had asked the college to do, uh, to attract, you know, local students and to sort of fit in, you know, where students might be attracted to go to Columbia Green and stay local to, to work. So, Rick. Yeah, Jim, if, if one of the parties chooses not to pass their piece of this, the whole thing falls apart. Correct? Yes, mm -hmm. that's correct. Yeah, and, and unfortunately in that case, as you know, if, our, if the roof deteriorates any more than it has, we'll be back to you with a uh, with a capital request uh, for that. So it would become a piecemeal kind of thing. And there's no guarantee the state would want to come up with their hand, so. And based on that, the uh, state funding, you know, when you go after the $10 million from them, yes. um, if, we've, if the two county <coughs> sponsors have uh, agreed to the ten million dollars. Are they likely to do that, or are they likely to come back if they were only going to give you eight? And then what happens to yeah. our share? Does the proportion stay the same? Or no, it's a, it, it, it's a great question. Um, we have uh, we've had some really productive conversations with the people on the other end, on the state end, uh, and normally they would not adjust it downward. Okay. Um, Usually it's an all or nothing, as, as Rich says. It's, okay. it, it's kind of all or nothing when it gets to the state also. Where they were. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> and the five million dollars we would get from, where would we take the five We're million bonding. dollars? Bond. We would bond it? Yeah. Yeah, we'd bond it in the GO bond government. <clears throat> roll it into our budget. Part. Uh, Jim, yeah. two questions. Number one, do you have any plans to communicate really aggressively about the very high ranking that the community college has received so that more people know what a good college this is? Because I think you may be one of the best kept secrets in this part of the country. That's part one. Part two, do you have an active recruiting program at high schools in the county? and in Dutchess County and in Green County to go to the schools, talk to the seniors, present your curriculums, talk about what a great place this is. Is that something that's part of your routine to encourage the moment? Yeah, let me, let me uh, thanks for the question. Right. The, uh, I think, uh, let me answer it this way. Uh, we have a new public relations person that we just brought on board who is an expert in social media. I think we know that communicating with students now is, is through social media. It's not through the newspapers as we're used to, although readership is still up. So we, we try to meet the students where they are, and the person we brought on board has expertise in this. In fact, she, she constructed a, uh, a great campaign for a private university in Albany, uh, and her work was so good that we had the opportunity to hire her, and we did. So she's putting together a whole communications plan that's going to help out with, with the very things that you're talking about. It's getting out the information about our rankings. You know, we're getting, the students told us, student opinion survey last year told us that we're, we're number one among the 30 community colleges in 22 areas, uh, from academic programs to uh, harmony on campus to, you know, everything except, you know, it, I was going to say food in the cafeteria, but that even got good grades. So, um, we're, we, we have that information that, that um, the new survey that came out that Chairman mentioned, number two in the state, number 27 in the country, uh, out of 720 some community colleges. That information is getting rolled into a new kind of public relations campaign. Uh, but it's really geared uh, first at parents of students as the influencers 
and also at students, guidance counselors, and so on. We have kind of a hierarchy of how decisions are made, how we know people, uh, students make their decisions. Remember, an older audience also has to be reached, which we're, we're doing. We have the, the, the higher uh, age group that have joined this average age 26 at the school, so uh, we're reaching them. As far as the local high schools, we're in every school in the 12 public school districts in Columbia and Greene County, we're in at least once a month or once every two months with our representatives. Duchess County, you mentioned, I can't address that one. <laughs> we're, we're bound by service area agreements that keep us in Columbia and Greene County. But if there's some leakage into Duchess County or Ulster <laughs> County, well, oh well. Can we support Duchess County High Schools? We can't recruit there? Uh, we can't specifically recruit in the high schools, although our presence is, is in there. Uh, uh, they know about so we have a lot of students that have come from northern duchess uh you know pine plains high school red hook high school we have a lot off of the top of ulster county but to go physically in there um, becomes problematic um, why that's uh, there's service area agreements that suny has for each community college just like we don't want the valley to set up a satellite in columbia county we can't go progressively into green county or uh, Dutchess County, but if our advertising spills over in there, they know about us. So it's a different situation because we have we have, ta we have school tax money going to schools. Yeah, we're not. Oh, we're yeah. not asking, we're not asking Hudson Valley to, to come to where their school taxes aren't being supported. But if we're supporting school taxes to a Dutchess County High School, I see no reason why we shouldn't yeah. insist on your ability to recruit yeah. there. And well, the, we recruit. We do recruit. We know who the students are that attend those out of out of county high school because of the residential addresses and they all get letters from us. So we're just discreet in how we do it. You know, you know, a lot of the towns have fairly extensive communications vehicles at the town level, newsletters and email lists and stuff. If you could send us material <coughs> on a periodic basis, we could communicate it to the families in our towns which might be another element of this communications process. That'd be, that'd be a big help. And also the uh, um, uh, suggestion came our way, uh, which I think is a really good one, that we do send our team out. If you would, if you would be kind enough to uh, allow us to come and talk to your, uh, your, town, your town council meetings or whatever forum you think appropriate, uh, you know, we'd be happy to, to come out at any time to talk about, to talk about the college. You just let us know when and where, and, and, and we're there. Jim, just one question on the timeline for this. It's yep. really important for yep. it's us right now, myself, to build a budget for 18. If the governor passes this in the budget of April, what's your timeline to, uh, for construction? And the bottom line is my question is, do I got to budget something as a capital project for the college for next year, 2008? Uh, if, if it's approved in April, we want to get underway with at least the engineering and the architectural stuff, and maybe some of the smaller projects, but it's not the five million, it's not going to be next year. Uh, so I'm, best guess. So I'm sitting here and i got to borrow money to pay yeah. those. Yeah, I understand. How much? Yeah. I, I don't need a number tonight. Yeah. I'm going to need that rather so quickly. I, yeah. Whether that's a million, two million, or three million, sure. I will need to budget that. Yeah, and I, I understand the question. Yeah, I think this is probably just for time frame looking outward. This is probably at least, Jim, what, a three year project? I would say so. We're going to try to get the smaller you know, projects done next year and the block building probably ready for uh, programming and classes next fall if possible. So that's a probably maybe quarter or less of the whole total project. <coughs> Just so the supervisor you know, the resolution tonight is not you get a bonding resolution. It's just a resolution committing <coughs> the Board of Supervisors that we will back this project. Sooner or later next year, we will have to come to the Board of Supervisors with a bonding resolution for whatever that amount. Well, it's going to be for $5 million. That's going to be $5 million. But I will ban that accordingly over the three years, whatever time schedule and whatever amounts you put to that. That's how we'll do this. Very similar to the college or to the uh, courthouse. Any other questions? Okay, thanks very much. Everybody. Thank you. Thank, thank, you. You, thank, you, you. thank you. Um I'm gonna ask Rick to call the finance committee meeting to order and then
Silent prayer followed by the pledge of allegiance to the flag. <laughs> pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, I'd like to request the clerk call the roll. Basson. Here. Weigel. Here. Bratton. Here. Benvenuto. Here. Stats. Here. Ke uh, Keevney. Here. Nair. Here. Lowell. Here. Riley. Happily present. Nabosny. Here. Craig. Here. Chipkowski. Here. Lagonia. Here. Sterling. Here. Cross. Here. Moore. Here. Hughes. Here. Scalera. Here. Guzzi. Here. Teal. Morell. Here. Knott. Here. Skoda. Thirty-three twenty-six present, two oh nine absent. We have a form. Thank you. I need a motion to pay the bills, accept the treasurer's report, and file the minutes within the clerk's office. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Okay, we have a proclamation. I'd like to ask uh, Linda Tripp from 4-H and uh, John Riley to come up. Everyone, thanks for having us tonight. Um, this is our. Um, Come this way, so the camera can catch oh, you. Oh, okay. Otherwise, these teens only get the back of their heads on. <laughs> well, that wouldn't be good. <laughs> um, this is our annual visit uh, to your meeting, and uh, we have our National 4-H week coming up the first full week in October this year. So that's why we're here in September because it takes place after your October meeting, and. Um, uh, two of my teens here tonight, they're going to be giving you a couple things. Um, Noah is going to be giving you a keychain, if any of you have keys anymore that you can use. So Noah, if you want to go start handing those out. And um, Hunter has a fact sheet that I made up for the Economic Development Committee meeting a couple months ago. And um, you can just pick one of those. And if you go right through, give one to everyone. And uh, this fact sheet, I just, I'm not going to read through the whole thing, but the front of it talks about some of our teens um, and how they've excelled in the 4-H program across the state and across the nation this year. It's pretty been pretty exciting. And then on the back, you're going to see some statistics about kids involved in 4-H clubs as well as in our community programs um, across our two counties and some of our, fi fi our financial partners. Um, we really appreciate, appreciate the funding that we get from the county, but we also go out and look for funding elsewhere and then some of the fundraising um, activities that we participate in. So um, feel free.
free to contact me anytime. My phone number's up on the top. And uh, if you have any questions or any ideas how we can do our work better. And um, with that, Noah and, uh, and uh, Hunter are uh, giving you your little pieces of ways to remember forage. John has a resolution. Thank you, Linda. Uh, I'm the Economic Development Chair of Why Am I Up Here Doing 4-H. Uh, when I first took over the committee and Cornell Cooperative started coming in every month to give us their talks and update us on what they were doing, uh, I gradually understood over the last uh, two years now how important their work is in regarding economic development in our county, uh, the support of the current farms that we have, uh, their support of the horticulture, but more importantly, the, the two youths here tonight, and some of the, we've probably had 40 or 50 over the last two years come to our committee meetings. They're the future of, of our county in terms of agritourism, in terms of craft farms and distilleries and growing food, uh, both on the organic side for the local farms for our, to support our industry that we have. Uh, obviously, agritourism, agriculture, uh, small farms are all very vital components to our economic development, and that's why 4-H works so well with, with the Economic Development Committee. So I'm happy to be the one who gets to read the proclamation. Just, just share one other thing. I don't know if yep. any of you saw the article that I put in the new, I sent out to the papers um, before the Columbia County Fair, but it was most interesting, I think, this year that we had probably around 45 or 50 kids, 4-H members, who participated in the dairy show at the Columbia County Fair. And of those, probably only five or six actually owned the dairy animal that they showed at the fair and actually live on farms. That means that most of those kids um, don't live on farms, but they're very interested in the business. And um, although they will often say that they do it because they love the cows, but um, that's where it starts. And uh, so there's, there's a two-pronged thing. First of all, we have kids who are learning about the dairy industry, and of course we have livestock and all that kind of thing, but this is an example. They're learning about the dairy industry, and then we also have farms that are partnering with them because those kids need to get those animals from somewhere, and they need to they're, most of them are not bringing them home to their backyard. So we have farmers in this county who, and this year I think there were eight or nine farms and farmers who then, we call it um, loan um, their animals for these kids to use. So these kids, all through the summer, once a week or more, are going to these farms and learning from the farmer and taking these animals out and um, practicing so they are able to be led and not dragged around in the show ring. And so it's really a great partnership, but it's showing how um, there is a lot of interest and it's not only the kids who live on farms, although there are some of those, but then others. And we really need the kids who don't live on farms to be interested in farming. And so that's really, I think, a plus. Thank you, Linda. Any, any way to attract young workers to the county is uh, very important to us. Or to stay in the county. Yes, with uh, the absence of Supervisor Skoda, we're a good example of our county getting older. Uh, so younger workers are, 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 are key, so I appreciate all your work. Thank you. And I will now read the proclamation. Guys, come on up. Whereas 4-H is America's largest youth development organization, having supported almost 6 million youth across the country thus far, and whereas 4-H had beginnings in rural America, now serves youth ages 5 to 19 in towns and villages, as well as rural communities in Columbia County. And whereas each of the 4-H's on the clover represent ways youth can grow and develop in 4-H. The first H stands for head, for critical thinking and problem solving. The second H stands for heart, for self-discipline, integrity, and communication. The third H stands for hands and serving others. And the fourth H is for health and choosing a healthy lifestyle. And whereas 4-H is delivered by the Cooperative Extension, a community of more than 100 public universities across the nation that provide experiences where young people learn by doing in hands-on projects in areas including health, science, agriculture, and citizenship. And whereas National 4-H Week showcases the incredible experiences that 4-H offers young people and highlights the remarkable 4-H youth who live in every corner of Columbia County and work each day to make a positive impact on those around them. And whereas 4-H recognizes and thanks the many volunteers who give generously of their time, talents, energy, and resources to the youth of Columbia County, now therefore be resolved that Matt Morell, Chairman of the Columbia County Board of Supervisors, 
does hereby proclaim the week of October 1st through October 7th, 2017 as National 4-H Week in Columbia County. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. by Wyatt Yelp, 335 by Craig, 336 by Knott, 337 by Lull, 338 by Hughes, 339 by Moore, 340 by Grattan, 341 by Hughes, 342 by Supervisor Scalera. Supervisor Scalera. Mr. Chairman, I offer these resolutions for that. Second the board. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Resolution 343 of 2017 by Supervisor Keevney, 344 by Wyatt Yelp, 345 by Craig. 346 by Knott, 347 by Lull, 348 by Hughes, 349 by Hughes, 350 by Grattan, 351 by Hughes, 352 by Scalera, 353 by Supervisor Keevney. Supervisor Keevney. Mr. Chairman, I offer these resolutions for Dutch. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Oh, I'm sorry, we need a second. Second. <laughs> okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Sorry about that. Three, uh, resolution 354 of 2017 by Supervisor Weigelt, 355 by Craig, 356 by Knott, 357 by Lull, 358 by Hughes, 359 by Moore, 360 by Grattan, 361 by Moore, 362 by Scalera, 363 by Keevney, 364 by Supervisor Weigelt. Supervisor Weigelt. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to offer these resolutions for adoption. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carried. Resolution 365 of 2017 by Supervisor Craig, 366 by Knott, 367 by Lull, 368 by Hughes, 369 by Hughes, 370 by Grattan, 371 by Moore, 372 by Scalera, 373 by Keevney, 374 by Wengel, 375 by Craig, and 376 by Supervisor Knott. Supervisor Knott. Mr. Chairman, I offer these resolutions for not Second the motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Mr. Chairman, I'd like to vote no on 376. Okay. So the, the next one needs a... a third, uh, resolution 377 of 2017 by Supervisor Lull um, requires a two-thirds uh, majority vote. So, Chairman, I'll make one. I'll throw up the resolution and we do a roll call vote on that. Well, I'll second that. Okay. <laughs> All in favor? Okay. Uh, yeah, I know, I was oh, surprised oh. Walls with Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Second. I thought you were a special one. Uh, sorry. <laughs> I think I missed y'all. <laughs> okay, um, so we'll go to the two-thirds majority vote. Uh, Supervisor Basson. Yes. Weigel. Yes. Grattan. Yes. Benvenuto. Yes. Sachs. Yes. Keevney. Yes. Mayor. Yes. Lowell. Yes. Riley. Yes. Nawazny. Yes. Uh, Supervisor Craig. Yes. Chukowski. Yes. Ligonia. Yes. Sterling. Yes. Cross. Yes. Moore. Yes. Hughes. Yes. Scalera. Yes. Guzzi. Yes. Teal. Morrell. Yes. Matt. Yes. Skoda. Uh, 3667A, uh, 218 absent, the uh, resolution passes. Thank you. Uh, and then the final resolution is 378 of 2017 by Supervisor Knott. Supervisor Knott. Yeah, I mean, I'll ask for a roll call vote on it. No. Don't worry, isn't that another? Uh, no, no, we don't have to have a roll call. Okay, I thought you did. So we, you just you make a motion? Make a motion to uh, approve this. I'll second that. Sorry. All right. All right. All right. Opposed? Carried. Thank you. Um, or do 
any supervisors have any business for the board? Supervisor Cross. Yes. Speaking for some of the churches in the county, I would like to invite you all to join in our annual Salute to Jesus Parade, which is on Saturday. Thank you. Supervisor Hughes. Um, just a brief statement because 